but this show really kind of, uh, it's really focusing on, on at least one big aspect of something that I have to say about Akedis Yitzhak. Um, and that is, I, I've dealt with it for, yeah, close to 40 years. It's so troubling. Uh, the thing that first got me was that Abraham is spoken to by God, take your son, your only one, the one you love, uh, and take him up and offer him as a sacrifice. And he gets up early in the morning and he goes, and there's nowhere in the text that says, and this says nothing about his wife. It says nothing about Sarah. That's what got me really going on this subject. Because uh, so, it was so deeply upsetting that he would not communicate this, this unbelievable command from God uh, to his wife uh, of, I mean, their, in their life together. And so, uh, to me, the issue is, how do you plumb Sarah and Isaac and Abe's terrifying encounter with God? How do you understand it? Uh, we grapple with it every, sing, every single Rosh Hashanah. We grapple with it daily. Well, I'll tell you. If anything, the paintings I hope I have in front of you here, it's the hidden characters that I think that I started getting at it. It's the characters that are not the headliners. Of course, the headliners are Abraham and Isaac, but no, it's looking more at Sarah. It's looking more at Hagar. And then uh, what almost surprised me was that I ended up doing here, looking at the angel of death, who isn't even in the narrative. So uh, when you go and look at the paintings, understand that the reason why those characters are being focused on is because that's, I think, part of the entree you can get into the subject, into the, su into, into the narrative, uh, and as we break into it, because it's such a difficult narrative, we know so well, but we don't know it at all. And so it's through those, quote, minor characters, or even hidden characters, that, that we can understand the, this subject. Just to take a quick look at a few paintings that I uh, I, I want you to notice when you go back out, uh, out, out into the exhibition. Uh, in the uh, Akeda Verbs, the first painting uh, of that set of 30 paintings uh, has nothing to do, per se, with the Akedah's Yitzhak. It is the Akeda of Hagar and Yishmael. Because, of course, that's the first time that Abraham effectively, quote, sacrifices his son his only son at one point, right? Ishmael is his first son. And so that, to me, is first of all how this whole thing starts. This idea of the horror of it all, of either being told to or willfully allowing your son to be endangered. Um, and also, you should be reminded that the last painting in the Akeda Verbs is, ends up with Hagar, the other half, Hagar and Ishmael, at the very end, Abraham returns to, in the Torah, Keturah, right? And who is Keturah? Rashi on the spot immediately says, that is Hagar. And so um, I've done an entire series of paintings just on Hagar, because obviously she must be very, very important for Abraham. After Sarah is dead, after Isaac is married, he goes back. Hagar. And so that's the end of the series, and because that's really part of the whole thing. So this, so that I want you to please look at the, the first painting and the last painting in that series. In paintings, um, paintings uh, two, three, and four, then we're really focused. We're really focused, and it's about Sarah. First, the, the, the second painting is Abraham hearing God's voice. You're seeing uh, Abraham and Sarah, they're in bed together, they were just having a night's sleep, and suddenly he hears God's voice, says, take your son. In the second one, he sits up, and in the third one, he's gone. And so that poignant scene, again, just got to look and be in that narrative, the poignant scene in which Abraham has left the house. Sarah is alone. I'm haunted by it, and I hope that will touch you in that, uh, the fourth painting of this series.